what's going on youtube welcome back to the channel today i got a nice little obscure gem for you guys from my hi-fi collection this is the adc sound shaper one stereo frequency equalizer it is a five band graphic equalizer from the mid to late 70s i believe but i'm not exactly sure adc seems to be one of the most obscure hi-fi brands that i've come across except for maybe analytic acoustic seriously guys if you guys have heard of this brand or have seen these type of speakers, please let me know down in the comments. I can't find anything on that brand. But enough yakking. Let's go ahead and get this thing apart. Go ahead and clean it up. And let's see exactly how it was made. This is the first of these type of equalizers made from this company. And the later parts, they had ICs in them, meaning they had integrated circuits. Let's see what this is. And let's see if we can't get a date code off this thing. So here's the unit in all of its glory. Um, I bought this off of eBay about eight years ago for $39, and the reason why I actually bought it is because the receiver that I had at the time was, it wasn't really a crappy receiver or bad by any means, um, it just didn't have a lot of the tonal adjustments that I wanted. A lot of receivers and stereos and hi-fi from that era, and well, I guess a lot in general, had only a high frequency adjustment and a low frequency adjustment meaning there's really no adjustment for your mid-range. So basically what that is doing is just kind of fixing a set point for your mid to be at. And in my opinion, I usually like to have the mids low. That's kind of an old trick that I was taught a long time ago, is to uh, kind of drop your mids if you're not really happy with the sound quality. Since then, I've kind of strayed away from equalizers. You know, I'm not going to go down the old audiophile path of... Uh, resistance is futile and all that um which i mean it does add resistance but they are very good for certain things and i will show you two examples of that and why actually a equalizer can help you in a couple different situations but first what i'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this to bits well not really take it to bits i'm going to take this cover off and then we're going to look at the inside now speaking of this this was not normally just wood colored like that um, there was a kind of a veneer a black plasticky veneer around it which made them look a lot better but um it was peeling and i was <laughs> that was a couple years ago so i decided to take it off i was going to refinish it um, i actually had a couple of ideas of different things to do with this as far as uh i was going to put a little vu meter circuit in it which is uh you know the little red and green lights that kind of dance to the music if you are unfamiliar with what a VU is. But uh, I was going to use this integrated circuit and try to integrate somehow uh, some LED VU meters into here somehow. Uh, the later models, I think even the later Soundshaper 1s had VU meters. Uh, they went on to the Soundshaper 2 uh, and then the Soundshaper 3. Um, they are all built like tanks. And uh, as far as the sound shaper equalizers, I can say those are definitely an amazing thing to find and very cool. All right, so again, enough yapping. Let's go ahead and take this apart. Now, ADC has made a couple of very good things. I just can't find any really history on them. I went to, I think it's old radio, or no, radiomuseum.com, and I was able to find a couple things that they had made. One was called the 60 Amplifier, which was obviously an amplifier. Uh, but what they were really noted for in the 60s, and I believe what they started out doing was they were known for making their phono cartridges. As far as, you know, a stylus for a turntable. And, um, do I gotta take that off? What do I gotta do here? I think this just comes off. No, I, I gotta take those two off. And there's not really too much information. There's a little bit of information on those phono cartridges, but there wasn't really too much information on anything else. Now, they do make a, uh, I don't remember the exact, uh, number for the speakers but it one is a 303 which is a bigger speaker and then they have a 404 it's like a g 303 i don't remember but um 
those are pretty highly regarded, and you can find a couple of things online about those. But um, I don't know anything else about them. Another thing that kind of is weird. Oh, wow, that's... Yep, no integrated circuits in there. But uh, another thing to note is, I mean, this is a very, very weird size. It's about two-thirds the length of a regular hi-fi piece. And, um, I mean, not very deep. Which makes me wonder if they had, you know, smaller receivers or pieces of hi-fi equipment that were this size that, you know, kind of went in a set. I've never seen anything else like it, but... So, yeah, as you can see, as I can see, there are no integrated circuits. This is just all transistors, resistors, capacitors, a transformer. So now your slide pots are all up in here, and they're uh, attached to a circuit board, which is kind of sandwiched onto the front plate there. And it looks like a cold solder joint. So now I would venture to believe that, you know, all of the electrolytic capacitors should be replaced in this. But um, looking at them, they all look really good. I don't see any of them leaking any type of electrolytic fluid. They're not bulged. Um, looks really good, actually. All right, so I went ahead and took this front plate off. It was actually quite simple. Just take all the knobs off of these slide potentiometers off, and then there was two bolts up top and then two on the bottom. Although I can't really pull it all the way away from the actual chassis because the two leads for the LED are in there. But I wanted to show you guys real quick on how to clean these slide potentiometers. Um, these ones are actually pretty good because you can get access to inside in between the little tracks and uh, use some deoxid or uh, WD-40 makes a pretty good product. But what you want to do is take the little red uh, straw that comes with it and kind of stick them in there and then, you know, spray it really good and then go ahead and move these up and down to kind of work it in there. Oh, okay, they're a little bit better. So yeah, now we can kind of get a better view of what is actually inside there on that board. I see a couple of coils. There's some uh, capacitors, there's some, obviously, resistors. But uh, yeah, this is all just solid state components. There's no ICs in this. And I'm pretty sure since the later models were called uh, IC in the name, which is an acronym for integrated circuit, um, I'm pretty sure that they would have integrated circuits in them. They actually had a lot more functions on, you know, the Sound Shaper 2 and the Sound Shaper 3. All right, and so what we're going to do so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to slap this all back together and uh, clean it up, of course. I'm going to try to spray some spray in those slide pots. And uh, I guess that's really all it needs. It's kind of clean. But uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do a demonstration for you guys. Uh, just real quick, we're going to hook it up and uh, let you hear what it sounds like with and without the equalizer. And uh, hopefully it can kind of drive home the reason uh, why you may still want to use one, depending on your gear that you have. And then uh, the other thing I'm going to show you is going to have to do with a keyboard. So, so I actually just went and kind of took a little bit of an intermission and uh, went down and watched one of Rick and Record's videos, uh, his latest one, actually, as of when this was filmed. And uh, I actually found out from Rick that uh, David Crosby actually died today. So... Yeah, kind of a dark day. Um, it's kind of odd because I just did a video on this album cover. And in doing that, was doing a lot of research on David Crosby and uh, Stephen Stills and Graham Nash, Henry Diltz, Gary Burden, uh, Roger McGuinn, all of them. Uh, he started off in the Birds, got kicked out of the Birds. And uh, then he and Stephen Stills kind of got together. Stephen Stills was from Buffalo Springfield and uh, kind of had the bass, <laughs> the mid-range, and they needed the treble. So they, uh, so Mama Cass actually set them up to all sing together. She knew that they were looking for to kind of fill their uh, vocal thing. And then that was when Crosby, Stills, and Nash became a thing. And they were huge, obviously, and very influential. So, uh, yeah. 
if you take all of the pauses in between all of the words that I say, and then that can be uh, the moment of silence because it's, it's probably long. So but moving right along, I went ahead and took the front plate completely off and I took this bottom plate off and it says on here that it's only to be uh, serviced by qualified service personnel. And they made it quite easy because if I go to recap this or if you have one and you want to recap it, I mean, you can get to everything without really disassembling too much. I mean, yeah, just all the components look really good, really well made. I mean, check out them trim pots. I love them old trim pots. They look so cool. And uh, just everything on here is made really well. You don't see it anymore. But the fun thing that I did find actually on here, let's see if we can actually see it, is there's a date code down there. And it says December 8th, 1978. So... I know that it is from the late 70s, it's from 1978, but uh, I think I'm going to spare you guys the time lapse this time of me putting it all back together. I was planning on doing that, but I don't know, I think I'm just going to stick it all together and not do the time lapse. Psych. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> I kill me. Just for the demonstration, what we're going to have to do is pick out a receiver that kind of fits that bill that I was talking about. And I think it's going to be this Sony right here. This is an STR-K850P. And uh, it's got that kind of tone that I was talking about, where the mids kind of, you know, set where it's at. And you can really only adjust the bass and the treble. And we got a couple of speaker selections that we can choose from, but I think to go with it, we are going to test it with these Onkyo speakers. They are a three-way with a passive radiator design. Uh, it just kind of sucks because that means I'm going to have to pull all this out. There's like six speakers on top of those speakers. But such is life. Well, that wasn't too much trouble. So we got everything hooked up. Now all I have to do is go and try to find some type of source. iPad. Switch. That's what, that's what it is. Switch. So we have the Nintendo Switch hooked up to the equalizer, hooked up to the receiver, going to the speakers. I have queued up from the audio library this white flower. It is called Tube Backer. So here we go. And this is just kind of even along the board. It is going through the equalizer, but uh, I don't have any of the settings changed, so that's enough. Okay, I, uh, I hope that kind of demonstrates, you know, the difference uh, with and without. But uh, so let's go on to the other two reasons. Well, the main two reasons why you might really want to have an equalizer in your setup. So now one reason that you might want to have an equalizer is if you have one of these old kind of smaller keyboards, actually have an auxiliary out like this, you can actually use an equalizer like that to make one of these sound a lot better. Give it a lot better bottom end and maybe bring out the treble and the mids in them because these are kind of known for not having the greatest sound. And the second reason you might want to have an equalizer is if you have one of these newer turntables that actually sends the output to line level instead of a phono level. 
An equalizer comes in very handy for that. Reason being is these turntables generally kind of boost the bass and drop the treble. So it's very easy to take an equalizer and, you know, turn the bass down, turn the treble up, and uh, makes it sound a lot better. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I just know that that's the way it is. Um, Technology Connections actually did a very good video on that that I just recently watched. I will put it right there for you to watch. So I'd like to dedicate this video to David Crosby. He was such an inspiration and such a legend to me. He will forever be in my heart and in my speakers. Rest well, friend. We'll see you on the other side. And thank you. And uh, be sure to watch out for my upcoming video. I'm going to go ahead and dissect these Ankyo speakers and take them apart and check them out and kind of do a video on them. Like I said, they are a three-way design and they do actually have a passive radiator, which I didn't know. So definitely please stay tuned for that. But like always, thank you for watching. Have a good one. And I love you.